This group of words is for grade eight. It's 35 words from all the strands for grade eight. Many of the words have already been introduced in grade seven or grade six. So these particular words are really getting into heavy into algebra or deeper into the strands. So here are 35 primarily grade eight words. The first one is square root. So the movement I use or the motion I use for, for square root is I just draw it right in front of the kids. Square root. We've already talked about squaring and cubing, so now we want to undo it by finding the square root. If you want to do the cube root, you draw it here and you put a little three in there, the cube root. So square root, cube root, off you go. The next word is really gets into the L idea of um, slope. So I usually go over here, I say positive slope, because again, I'm looking at it the way the kids are. Positive slope, negative slope. Positive slope, negative slope. Of course, you can also do zero slope, so just going straight across, and undefined slope. So positive slope, negative slope, zero slope, undefined slope. Um, when I talk about slope, I talk a lot about rise over run. Rise over run. It's the change in y over the change in x. How much did it go up compared to how much it went over? So a lot of rise, a little run, that's a lot of slope. A lot of rise, a little run, very steep. Or a little rise, a lot of run. That's not so steep. A little rise, a lot of run. So big slope, a little slope. Positive slope, negative slope, undefined slope, and zero slope. So I think if you can act that out with your hands, rise over run, rise over run. A lot of rise, little run. It becomes very concrete to the kids that you're measuring the change in y. Of course, if you go back again and look at the other videos, this is a coordinate grid and this is the y-axis. This is the x-axis, so we're actually measuring it on the coordinate grid. Now, once we have our coordinate grid here, this, I'm scratching my nose, this is also y-intercept. So you touch your nose to the y-axis, y-intercept. x-intercept, y-intercept. Again, slope. And then when you talk about y equals mx plus b, the m, up slope, down slope, up slope, down slope, the m is a nice representation for the slope. Is it positive or negative? Is it positive or negative? So m is something I would act out and the kids would go, oh, m, the slope. Y-intercept. Now b, I might just go b, b, because in the y equals mx plus b form, as we all know, b is the y-intercept. So that letter becomes significant to me. Um, we've talked about number lines. For irrational number, I might say, can't put it on the number line. The irrational numbers don't fit on the number line, like the square root of 2. The next big concept for eighth grade they need to know, besides irrational numbers, is congruent. So here we really have to be more specific about how we might train, cha translate this, uh, how we might transform this. Uh, these are congruent, same size, same shape. So we could translate it, we could translate it, we could reflect it, we can reflect it back, we can rotate it, we can rotate it back. So this, I use this for congruent and then all the different ways you can make it. Now we might do dilate, I'd stretch it out. So dilate, stretch it out, I don't know if that shows up well, but it's the idea that this one becomes bigger or smaller. So those would all be some of your transformations. Now here's the beauty, you could get your intersect going and you could say, you can say, translate across the y. So here's my y-axis. Translate across the y. Translate across the x. Reflect over the y. Reflect over the x. Rotate. I guess that would be clockwise. Rotate counterclockwise. So you want to get your rotations in, your reflections, and your dilations in. And you can do that right here, real easy. Quick review. Translate, translate, rotate, reflect. And you can do it over the different axes if you want. Um, the other big idea would be um, parallel. So we get parallel lines. Now this is where I really almost need another person, but if you think of these as parallel lines, I can make this my transversal. I don't know how well that shows up, but the transversal comes across and intersects the parallel lines, setting up all these angle pairs. Now, I could do this with my nose, but usually I have two kids act it out so that these become the vertical angles, right? And then we have the interiors and the exteriors um, but this is a nice model for the transversal, and then you can set up your different angle pairs of congruent angles. Um, finally, in this group, we have the right angle, which we've covered in the other earlier videos, and the um, right triangle. But when I bring this one in, this is the hypotenuse. 
And I usually bring it in a big way. Hypotenuse, right there. There's the hypotenuse. And then these become the legs. So if I just point to them with my nose, I've got the hypotenuse and two legs in my right triangle. And again, it's important to put the right triangle in different directions so it's not always in this particular position. Hypotenuse and the legs. Um, finally, the last one you might have to do would be if you have a triangle and you've already talked about the uh, altitude, when you get a, uh, a triangular prism, you would talk about the slant height. So you got, I really need to hold a triangular prism and point out the slant height. The last one I have for you really is the scatter plot. So we have this, and then we put the scatter plots on, and we find the line of best fit. So I was walking through an eighth grade class, I'd scatter plot, line of best fit are two important terms in that group.